are making a, a raggy trace for clean water. Um, basically what we require for the clean water raggy trace is a good pair of side cutters, a lighter for melting the wire, to tie the actual, this is the Kingfisher nylon, it's basically what we use for, instead of using crimps, we're using nylon, so we don't damage the actual wire. 200 pound <coughs> nylon coated wire, it's our Kingfisher brand that we carry, it works very well. 13 -0 hooks, these are our Sui range of hooks, they are absolutely phenomenal for raggies. Um, we'll be using two of those. NT swivel, number three, it's the biggest one that we carry in the NT range of swivels. Mustard scissors just to cut the nylon. Standard Kingfisher dangle that we, we make here at Kingfisher. A little sinker clip for our cone sinker. Number one, power swivel. And the reason we use number one is because when the person's actually leadering the raggy, that the swivel actually sits here in the hand and doesn't slide through his hand. It gives him something more to actually hold on to. Some small beads. Um, clear chartreuse doesn't really make a difference. Try and keep it as clear as possible. And of course our trusty little Vix Knox knife. To start off with, I'm going to have to go to our vise down the bottom here. Just to show you how to tie the actual knot from the wire to the hook. Okay, so let's go and play. Okay, basically what we're using is a nylon coated wire and like I said, this is for clear water fishing. Fishing down Mossel Bay, places like that where the water is extremely clean. Okay. Okay, the first Sui 13 -0. and you're going to have to look at this very carefully. Okay, so basically that's the line. What we do is we do this knot from underneath. So we're going from underneath up. We're wrapping it around the actual shank once and we're basically coming out through the top. That's it. So we've gone in through the bottom, around the shank and out through the bottom. Ah, uh, through the top, sorry. Grab your pliers. Now all we're going to do is take this wire here and pull it over and pull tight. So we take it, pull it over like so and we just basically start pulling it tight. And pull as hard as you can. Take your pliers now and this little part where the two wires are we just give it a little bit of a kink like that and what that does is actually just bites the wire together. Cut off the tag end there if you'd like, you can take a little piece of heat shrink and just stick it over it. It just makes it a lot stiffer and just neatens up this whole trace part here. The next step is to take our second hook and basically we take it loose. I personally like to put these hooks close together. If they're further apart, what actually happens is the raggy gets the one hook in the mouth, the other hook in the side or he opens his mouth. The further away they are, the more chance there's more leverage for the hooks to actually come out in the fish's mouth. So I'd like to keep them close together. So basically that distance. So the top part is almost in line with the eye of the other hook. So I'm just going to slide it up a little bit. There we go. So that's basically the measurement that I use for most of my raggy traces nowadays. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to snell it. So I'm going to take the wire and wrap it around six times around the eye of the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six times. And always remember to come through the top of the hook like that, towards the eye. 
and just slide the wire through it. Okay. Stick that onto my vise. And now just give it a nice little tug just to pull that tight. Take our lighter and we stick it on low. So you only want a very low heat. You don't want a very um, high heat like that. You want a very low heat. And we just lightly melt the plastic coating. That's all we're trying to do. So all I'm trying to do is just melt that coating. Pull tight. Take your fingers and just like just like that. <clears throat> and you can see how that plastic has actually melted all of the strands together. Now, if I push that, you can see it doesn't come undone. Okay. There we go. Now we give ourselves about 500 uh, lengthwise from the end here to here. I'm just going to take all my stuff now across to the other side and we can do the rest of the trace there. Okay, basically what I've done is I've uh, made the knot over the eye. I've now snelled it and melted the plastic. Now what we're doing is we're going to measure off 500 uh, mils, 50 centimeters, and we're going to tie our first little knot in the wire. So, we're using 19 to 25 kilo nylon. With this heavy 200 pound wire, the 25 actually works better. So what we do again, one, two, three times with the nylon, like that. And what we do is we just pull it. You can see it starts to get tight. We just get our measurement right. There's our measurement that we were looking for. Lubricate. And now all I'm going to do is just pull the nylon tight. Okay, cut it off as close as we can with our mustard scissors and just do another one. So now what we're going to do again is just the figure of eight. One, two, three times around, back through, like that, slide it down. A little bit of lubrication now I've got it where I want it to be and we pull top as we can okay so basically we've got two figure of eights next to one another it works almost as well as a crimp does the problem with a crimp is if you over crimp it you damage the wire this way with the nylon you don't damage the wire at all we take our UV knot sense or super glue and we just lightly touch it there. So let me just get my UV knot sense. Okay, so this is a Loon's UV knot sense. It works extremely well. Or like I say, super glue, whichever one you prefer. One little drop. Just spread it around a bit. Spread it around. And that's basically it there. And just make sure that it goes into all the little grooves of the nylon. Just keep on turning it. Take a UV light and cure it. it takes about 30 seconds to actually go hard. And we're just baking it slightly. There we go, that should be right. And yeah, there we go. It's not sticky anymore, so that is right. Our little beads. I'm only going to use one at a time. <clears throat> okay, a little clear bead works extremely well. We just insert it, slide it all the way down to where the UV knot sensor is. Over there. We then take our number three NT swivel. And like I say, our number three, being one of the biggest ones that we do, the biggest one that we do, works extremely well on 200 pound, 250 pound wire. So there it is there. And once again, 
the wire is actually flanged on either side so when it runs up and down it doesn't damage the actual wires it doesn't end up with those pigtails there we go and we just slide it down to where we want it to be I'll then just take another one of my little beads and I'm using the chartreuse green one normally it would be a clear one just so that you guys can actually see it because most of the times you can't see that clear bead when it's actually on this white surface here okay so basically there's the two beads as you can see going up and down the line there okay the next step is to actually measure the distance I'm very happy with that so that's where I'm going to tie my, uh, my stopper knot about there take another piece of nylon and we tie another two figure of eight so we're going to go around and go one two three times around there we go okay I'm just going to pull it very tight okay cut it off just make another one here slide it down to where the other knot actually is okay you don't need to do two for this but just for demonstration purposes I'm going to do two one is more than enough one is more than enough okay take a UV knot sense once again just in between the two little loops take our finger because it's bulged up a bit there and just run it around just to neaten it off a bit and with the UV light we just bake it for 30 seconds And it's nice and dry so that will slide all the way down okay the reason we put the second knot on here from there is basically for the bite back a lot of times the reggie comes towards you biting biting trying to get it into his mouth the sinker will run 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 and eventually it gets to here and won't go all the way to the end where your leader actually is attached if it gets all the way to the end where your braided leader, mono leader is, the reggae can bite through it. So when you actually strike, you're pulling your, the, the leader through the actual reggae's teeth. With this system, doesn't matter where it is, I'm just going to hold it up here. I've still got that extra 30 centimeters. I've still got that extra 30 centimeters of 200 pound wire where the reggie is biting around this area of your actual bait and he's biting the wire he's not biting your leader and he doesn't bite you off okay hence the second knot that we actually put on here the one that actually stops it from going all the way back so that's your your stopper knot basically for the reggie on the end we're going to attach a very big number one power swivel And the reason we use such a big swivel is that when you're actually holding the leader, the wire leader that is, you've got something to actually hold on to. So the fish, when he's shaking his head and doing what he wants in the surf, at least you've got something that, can go, that you can hold on to. If you use the smaller swivel, it will run through your hand the whole time and must probably cut your fingers. To attach that, very simple, figure of eight. Easy knot, works well, one. Two, there's a lot of other ways of doing it, but this just happens to be the quickest and easiest way of doing it for me. Put your two fingers inside there. I'm just going to drop all of this down onto the ground here. So now basically I've got it there in my hand. Take my pliers, grab the tag end, pull the knot tight. You see how it's pulling tight over there? Just get a bit of lubrication again, pull it close to my hand. 
pull it as tight as you physically can, lubricate, and what you do is you slide it down to the end of there with your swivel. Just gonna grab the hook, and I'm just gonna stick it under my, my legs here, guys, so don't, don't look at this too much, just so that I can actually pull it tight. I'm just gonna stick it here to show you another way of doing it. So now if that was stuck to my burglar guy at home, all I'm gonna do with this part here is just physically pull it. Take this part, put it in, and we just pinch it. Like that, that's all I've done is just pinch it. Come back here and we cut off the tag end. And again, if you want to make it look nice and neat, you can put a bit of heat shrink over it. Okay. And that's basically the knot. Okay, now for the sinker snooting, what I like to use is our Kingfisher leader line. Uh, one mil preferably, you can use 9 if you want. And the reason we use such thick um, sinker snooting is that if the raggy is biting and he, he bites, drops, bites, such the raggy a lot of times comes towards you and he actually bites your sinker trace and you'd be sitting there and he bite, bite, bite and all of a sudden slack line he's now bitten your sinker off and your line is basically just coming in towards you as you're taking up the slack line and he can't catch up because he's a very slow shark so it's always best to use as heavy a nylon sinker snoot as possible provided you're not fishing in rocks and um, yeah it just gives you added protection so you don't have to keep on changing your, si your um, sinker every time he eats you off so one mole figure of eight slide it down cut it off as close as you can so it's nice and neat Again, what we do now is just measure our dangle length. Okay, there's our dangle. We have our sinker part of it. So now we know what length to cut our sinker snooting at. There would be perfect. Our sinker clip. For this trace, you can either use a grapnel sinker or a cone sinker. Um, if a sea is very rough, a grapnel sinker. If a sea is flat and calm, a cone sinker. Just lubricate a bit and pull tight. Put it off as close as we can. Okay, let's just see if I got it right. End of the dangle goes on there. Okay, so that's basically what we're trying to achieve. Okay, there we go. The total trace. Lengthwise is about 1.8 meters. So try and make it as long as you can possibly throw it. So basically that is the length of the trace and I'll just show you the seesaw part of it. There we go. So that seesaw is nicely between the two. Look at our next episode or our previous episodes for the baiting of this whole trace for the raggies using bonnie cutlets or bonnies. Enjoy.